Good morning, Grade 7. Today's discussion will be about Quarter 3, Module 6, How Heat is Transferred. Objectives Infer the conditions necessary for heat transfer to occur. At the end of this module, you are expected to 1. Identify the forms of heat transfer. 2. Infer the conditions for heat transfer to occur. 3. Perform activities involving heat transfer. And 4. Cite the importance of heat transfer in everyday life. What I know. Choose the letter of the best answer. Write the letter of your choice on your answer sheet. See pages 1 to 2 of quarter 3, module 6. What's in? Using the field of letters below, look for five words that are related to our topic by drawing a line across the letters that form each word. The words may be found horizontally or vertically. Then, use the words that you found in identifying the terms described below. Write your answers on the space provided. Let us answer what's in. So the words in the puzzle are transfer, energy, temperature, fluid, and metal. Number one, it is the degree of hotness or coldness of an object. So the answer is temperature. Number two, this term refers to either a liquid or a gas. Answer, fluid. Three, it is the ability to do work. Answer, energy. Number four, this means to move a body to a different place or situation. The answer is transfer. And number five, it is a good conductor of heat. The answer is metal. What's new? Put a pair of socks on for five minutes. Then answer the following questions. Number one, what do your feet feel when you are wearing socks? Two, do your feet feel warmer while wearing socks? 3. Compare your feelings while wearing socks and without wearing socks. And number 4. Write your observations. Let us start our discussion about heat. So heat is an energy that is transferred from one body to another as the result of a difference in temperature. If two systems at different temperatures are brought together, energy is transferred or the heat flows from the hotter system to the colder. So if you would look at this illustration, you see that heat transfers from the warmer object going to the cooler object. So the effect of this transfer of energy usually, but not always, is an increase in the temperature of the colder system and a decrease in the temperature of the hotter system. In other words, heat is simply the transfer of energy from a hot object to a colder object. The transfer of heat stops only when the objects in contact already have the same temperature or are said to be in thermal equilibrium. Always remember that the heat flows due to the temperature difference from hot object to cold object. The heat flow within an object and from one object to another due to differences in temperature is known as heat transfer. Heat is transferred from one body to another through three methods, namely conduction, convection, and radiation. So to give you an overview about the three methods of heat transfer, let us take a look at our illustration. So in conduction, energy is transferred by direct contact. In convection, energy is transferred by the mass motion of molecules. And in radiation, energy is transferred by electromagnetic radiation. So we are going to discuss these three methods one by one. The first method of heat transfer is called conduction. Conduction is described as the transfer of heat that happens when heat energy travels between two objects at different temperatures or in direct contact with each other. Due to increased molecular vibration, heat from one molecule of higher temperature excites the molecules next to them. Conduction mainly occurs in solid objects. To further explain about conduction, let us take a look at this illustration. 
So we have a Bunsen burner and a steel rod. Our Bunsen burner is our source of heat. The flames of the Bunsen burner are in direct contact with our steel rod. So this part of the steel rod becomes hot. So when it becomes hot, the molecules within the steel rod becomes excited, meaning they begin to vibrate faster. So this portion of the steel rod will have lots of vibration. So the vibration would be passed on from one molecule to the next until the vibration reaches the end of our steel rod. So heat travels along the rod by means of conduction. Metals are good conductors of heat because they have many free electrons that vibrate and easily encounter other electrons, thereby making heat transfer easier. So one example of good conductors of heat are your metal pots and pans. So the two most common metals used in commercial cookware are aluminum and stainless steel, such as in this picture. So another example of a good conductor of heat is a metal spoon. On the other hand, insulators are poor conductors of heat. So some examples of insulators are glass, plastic, ceramic, rubber, paper, cork, fabric, wool, and wood. So all of these examples conduct heat poorly and they are called as insulators. Here are some examples of conduction. Number one, ironing of clothes. Two, walking barefooted in the sand. Three, a cube of ice is melted when placed into your hand. Four, chocolate candy in your hand will eventually melt as heat is conducted from your hand to the chocolate. And five, warming your back muscles with a heating pad. As we discuss the different examples of conduction, let us be reminded that, number one, heat flows or energy transfers from a hotter body to a colder body. And number two, conduction takes place if the objects are in direct contact with each other. So let us start with the first example, ironing of clothes. The hotter object is the iron and the colder object is the clothes. So heat transfers from the iron to the clothes. Number two, walking barefooted in the sand. The hotter object is the sand and the colder object is your feet. So heat flows from the sand to your feet. Number three, a cube of ice is melted when placed into your hand. The hotter object is your hand and the colder object is the ice. So heat flows from hand to your ice cube. Next we have, chocolate candy in your hand will eventually melt. So, the hotter object is your hand, and the colder object is the chocolate candy. So, heat flows from your hand to the chocolate candy. And last one, warming your back muscles with a heating pad. So, the hotter object is the heating pad, and the colder object is your back muscles. So, heat flows from the heating pad to your back muscles. So, why is it that conductors conduct heat easily while insulators do not? So to answer this question, let us read this statement. So conductors have many free electrons, whereas insulators do not. If you would look at the picture below, you would see that outer electrons of the atoms are loosely bound and free to move about through the material. So these free electrons make the transfer of heat very easy. While in insulators, we could see that most atoms hold on to their electrons. So the electrons are not free to move about through the material. So this is the reason why conductors are better in transferring heat than insulators. The second method of heat transfer is called convection. Convection involves the movement of fluids like liquids and gases. In convection, the heat of fluids is transferred from hot regions to cooler regions by means of convection currents. So to further explain about convection, let us take a look at our illustration. When water boils, the heat passes from the burner into the pot, heating the water at the bottom. 
So, the water at the bottom becomes hot, so it rises, and the cooler water at the top moves down to replace it, causing a circular motion. So, this circular motion is also called as convection currents. So, as hot water rises, density becomes lesser. So, gumagaan yung ating mga water molecules, so they tend to go up. So, the cooler water on top has a greater density, so they are heavy, so their tendency is to sink or go down. So, as this uh, water moves up and down, the water gets heated by means of convection currents. So, the cooler fluid moves to the bottom while the hotter fluid moves to the top. This rising and sinking of the molecules form a circling motion known as convection currents. So, as we have said in the previous slide, the heat from the burner is transferred to the pot. The water at the bottom becomes heated first. The hot water at the bottom rises to the top because it has lesser density. So, you will see these red arrows going up. This represents the warm water molecules. Next, cool water at the top will sink to the bottom because they have greater density, so they are heavier. So the cool water molecules are represented by the blue arrows. So you can see that uh, we have a circling motion happening in our uh, pot of boiling water. So the circling motion is known as convection currents. And convection currents is the reason why our pot of hot water becomes hot. Convection also happens in our day-to-day -day living. Here are some examples of convection. Number one, boiling water. Two, a steaming cup of hot coffee. Three, a hot air balloon. And four, an air conditioning system. As we discuss the different examples of convection, let us be reminded again of the following. Number one, heat flows from a hotter body to a colder body. And number two, in convection, it involves the movement of fluids such as liquids and gases. So let us start with the first example, a boiling water. So in a boiling water, the heat is transferred from the burner to the pot, making the water at the bottom of the pot hot. So warm water rises to the top because it has become less dense. And then the cooler water at the top sinks downward because it is uh, heavier, it has greater density. So you can see that inside the pot of water, we have this circling motion. So this circling motion is also known as the convection currents. Next, number two, a steaming cup of hot coffee. So this is what happens in the coffee cup. The coffee on top is cooled by evaporation. And since cooler is also heavier, gravity pulls it towards the bottom. Now, the warmer coffee underneath rises at the top to replace it. So inside this coffee cup, convection currents also takes place. Next example, we have a hot air balloon. So a hot air balloon rises because warmer air is less dense than the cool air. Okay? So, since the balloon is less dense than the air around it, it becomes positively buoyant. And then, another example of convection is an air-conditioned room. But in this picture, we have a heater instead of an air-conditioning unit. So, in this picture, the, the heater heats the air inside the room. So, what happens is that warm air rises because it is less dense. Then, the cool air on top gets pushed down because they are heavier and to replace the uh, warm air that has risen. So, you could see that convection currents takes place inside a room with a heater. Our third and last method of heat transfer is called radiation. In our discussion about light, we have learned that light is a form of radiation. Radiation is the transfer of heat by electromagnetic waves. It is a form of electromagnetic wave that does not need a medium to increase. 
So, in radiation, no solid, liquids, or gas are needed. So, heat is transferred by means of electromagnetic waves. When talking about radiation, heat energy travels as electromagnetic waves, which is similar as speed of light. Radiation can transfer from a source to another object even without a medium. The body absorbs the heat of radiation and makes it warm. So let us give an example of radiation. If you sit near a bonfire, you will feel the heat coming from the fire through radiation. So here, heat is transferred from the fire to the hands of this person. So even his whole body will feel the warmth of the fire even if there is no contact between them. So the heat of the fire travels to his hands and his body in the form of electromagnetic waves. This is also the same way of how heat from the sun travels through empty space and warms the planet Earth. So the heat of the sun reaches our planet Earth by means of electromagnetic waves. So the form uh, of heat transfer here is called radiation. When something is hot, it releases some of its energy in the form of electromagnetic waves. The waves then travel until they hit something. These waves warm up things that absorb them. So for example, our sun uh, releases solar radiation in the form of electromagnetic waves. So these electromagnetic waves warm up our planet. Therefore, you can feel the heat of the sun even if it is so far from the earth. The sun radiates solar energy. So in this picture, you can see that the sun radiates heat in all directions. Energy is transferred through space to earth. Let us now discuss the different activities that you need to answer in what's more. Independent activity one, procedure number one, prepare a candle, a small piece of cloth, spoon, and matches. Two, light the candle. With a piece of cloth, hold a spoon over the flame for five minutes. So make sure that you have adult supervision in doing this activity. Guide questions, what happens to the handle of the spoon after five minutes? Two, what do you think will happen if you are not using a piece of cloth in the activity? Independent assessment 1, and scramble the letters to reveal the correct answer. 1. It is the process of heat transfer from one body to another when the two bodies are in direct contact. 2. It is the process of transferring heat through the motion of either liquid or gas. 3. It is the energy transferred from one object to another due to the difference in their temperature. 4. It is a process at which energy is transmitted through space. And 5. These materials are considered as poor conductors of heat. Independent Activity 2 Procedure number 1. Prepare the following materials. Ice cube, tray, water, food coloring, and clear drinking glass or container. 2. Mix water and food coloring. Pour the colored water into an ice cube tray. 3. Put the ice cube tray in the freezer until frozen. 4. Fill a clear glass with warm water. And 5. Add one ice cube to the glass of water. Guide questions number 1. What happens to the ice with food coloring inside the glass of water? 2. Is convection current visible in the activity? Independent assessment 2. Write true if the statement is correct and false if it is not. Number 1. Heat travels from a hot body to a cold body. 2. Heat does not travel in solid, liquids, and gases. 3. Conduction is the transfer of heat from molecule to molecule in an object. 4. Convection is the transfer of heat by currents. 5. Radiation is the transfer of heat through space. And number 6. Warm molecules sink while cold molecules rise. Independent Activity 3 Procedure Walk under the sun for 3 minutes. Note, it is not advisable to stay under the sun for too long. Guide questions. Number 1. 
Why do you feel warm when you walk under the sun? And number two, record your observations. Next, independent assessment three. Identify the method of heat transfer described on the following situations below. So your choices are conduction, convection, and radiation. Number one, Angelo grabs a coin from his pocket and it feels very cold to touch. After holding it for a few seconds, the heat from his hand is directed to the metal coin. 2. A spoon is left in a bowl of hot soup. The spoon gets hot. 3. Robbie feels his head and arms getting warm as he walks under the sun. 4. Wendell loves the warmth from the fireplace circulating throughout the house. And 5. The hot surface of the land heats the air above it. The air becomes warm. Next, what I have learned. So let us complete the following statements. Number one, in this module, I have learned that heat happens when... Second statement, heat usually travels from blank body to blank body. And third statement, the three modes or methods of heat transfer are... Next, what I can do. Directions, explain how heat travels when you cook grilled fish or inihaw na isda. So in your answer sheet, you are going to explain how heat travels as you cook fish. Assessment, Part A, Modified True or False. Directions, write true if the statement is correct. But if it is false, change the underlined word or group of words to make the whole statement true. And part B, identification. Directions, identify the method or methods of heat transfer, conduction, convection, or radiation described in the following situations below. So see pages 12 to 13 of quarter 3, module 6. Next, additional activity. Performance test number 3.6. Answer the following questions completely. Number one, how does convection apply in an air-conditioned room? Two, why are handles of frying pans covered with plastic or rubber? So for your performance test number 3.6, you need to answer these two questions completely in your answer sheet. So, for the first one, explain how convection occurs inside a room with an air, condition, uh, air conditioning unit. And then number two, explain why the handles of frying pans are covered with plastic or rubber. So, for Science 7, Quarter 3, Module 6, how heat is transferred, you need to have the following on your answer sheet. Number one, what I know. 2. What's more? Answer independent activities 1, 2, 3 and independent assessments 1, 2, 3. What I have learned, what I can do, assessment, and additional activities. The additional activities will be your performance task number 3.6. So if you are done with the module, upload your answer sheets in PDF format in your Google Drive folder. The path is Science 7, Quarter 3, Module 6 or you may send them in JPEG format to my messenger. So thank you for attending our Science 7 online class. God bless you all.